Welcome to Science and Wisdom Live, where scientists and meditators meet. Yeah, Dr. Ravelli, I'm curious about your there's a common analysis in our Buddhist view where you actually start analyzing consciousness down to what seem like quanta. You know, you start to you start to search for the quanta of consciousness, and um, it's a meditation. You know, it's a pro, it's it's not just intellectual. It's something you do to help dissolve that sense of self, which you you you, you yourself may have done. Um, what is your sense? I want to dive even deeper to your thoughts about consciousness like this idea of what is consciousness um it, is there a sense that consciousness could be broken down to quanta 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 that you know themselves might eventually not be findable or do you think there might be a point where we reach reach the plank level or something like that of consciousness i don't know um i don't know in a sense um in a sense as i as i answered the previous question uh the my work on quantum mechanics was to disentangle uh, the, uh, the the questions raised by by quantum theory from the question raised by consciousness, right? So in a sense, it was look, um, we can uh, uh, we can find ways to make sense of quantum mechanics, not getting confused about quantum mechanics, uh, uh, not by referring to to our consciousness, but by not referring to our consciousness, okay? So um, now I think that consciousness is among the most interesting um, uh, currently studied issues in science, of course. I mean, as you, as you all know, there is a lot of work uh, in philosophy of mind, in neuroscience, in, uh, in uh, uh, a lot of deep thinkers from the scientific point of view right now are, are proposing views of, uh, of consciousness. Now, it seems to me that uh, something that they have in common uh, goes exactly the direction that Geshe was, uh, was saying before, namely, um, consciousness is not a thing, it's not an entity, it's a process, uh, it's, it's, it's something happening, okay? And it's not a unitary process. It's not just a simple sort of a, a compact little thing. This is consciousness. It's a, it, it's a complicated process. Once you start looking uh, a little bit more in detail, uh, it's not a consciousness that does not exist. I, I, I hate this idea that the, when you study things better, you understand better, they become uh, false. They don't become false. You just know, you, you increase your knowledge of the conventional reality about them. That's a, that's I would present the thing. I mean, when you uh, you think there is a man like there, and then you go and you see a straw man. Uh, well, you have learned more what 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 you're talking about, um, and and you correct some ideas about uh, how to better think about that. Um, you don't get to its final bottom line uh, independent reality because uh, that's exactly the mistake we have to avoid. Void, but you can learn about that, more about that. And I think this is what is going on in science about consciousness right now. We are, <clears throat> we are opening up this notion and understanding it better and better and better. Something similar happened to the notion of uh, life in the last century. Uh, a century ago, life seemed something very clear and clean and compact and mysterious, le ram vital, some mysterious life force. And then slowly through biochemistry, through biology, different way of thinking, system thinking, we have a better way of thinking about life. And we discover that life is not something different, not something intrinsically different, fundamentally different from the rest of the chemical process of the universe. It is a very special one, which we understand with proper notions for, uh, for life. And we are sort of breaking apart. It's a magic, beautiful, incredibly fantastic process. Uh, it's just a process, okay? It's, it's, it's no, life thing there is a life combination of things so it's like the 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 when Geshe was saying my my, my pen is it, it's 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 made by little things which i conceive together and and i bring together and and, and i call it a pen so and i think the same is going to happen with uh, uh with uh, um, with consciousness and i i i i certainly think that the sort of introspective way uh 
in, 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 in the Eastern tradition of and through meditation to think about um, uh, uh, the mind will and should at some point find a common ground um, with, uh, 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 with what we are learning from neuroscience uh, about the mind. I don't think there should be a contradiction ultimately, uh, not because one can be re reduced to the other, uh, but it seems to me they're complementary uh, uh, perspectives on what goes on in our mind, in our brain. Ultimately, I don't think that our mind is different from our brain. So I'm very Spinozian in this sense. I think the, the brain is the same thing with the mind, but not because the mind is false and the brain is real. The opposite is equally true, it seems to me. The mind is real and the brain is false. They're both, they're both ways of describing a complex phenomenon that we understand uh, to some extent, perhaps not entirely, and maybe it's hard to translate from one cultural tradition to another. So the full translation, maybe I, I don't even know if it is possible uh, to, to translate from one tradition to another. So um, there is a, uh, from this perspective, uh, uh, the, the answer to your question is that really I don't know. So I think that at some point, uh, uh, I hope at some point we will be able to uh, connect the mind as experienced by the mind itself that reflects it from itself uh, for, with uh, uh, the description of the process happening in our neurons or whatever synapses or, uh, or, or whatever, and see how the how how the two pictures get close uh, to one another. I hope so. And Geshe-la, what's what's your thought about any um, further thoughts about the mind and brain? I mean, yeah, I, for sure. I mean, there's a there's very interesting development as Carlos already just indicated within science. There's more openness, right? So, what consciousness is all about is a very very challenging subject. Yeah, because we talk about subjective aspect as well, which is empirical, but very very difficult to prove. But its correlation with the physical brain, which is empirical, being uh, can be examined. That correlation, uh, I mean, to a certain extent, certain types of research suggest that there's a very strong correlation between the two, if you take the, the position of consciousness being separate from a physical brain. But there's a correlation between the two. So, uh, because there's a lot of questions, especially, you know, the, the, the hard, hardcore problem within neuroscience, uh, the hard problem, so to say. So, uh, David Charles, for example, he has a very interesting kind of point. He says maybe it's a kind of an extreme idea, but maybe we should start to see consciousness as a particular building block, like see space, time, and mass, right? Although with space time also, we have the questions if it's a fundamental building block or not, but from the point of view of seeing that as a separate entity to be researched, or maybe it has its own properties or not, and then correlate that with the physical brain, because there's quite some research that suggests if you have this correlation between the two, what is first and what comes after. So certain types of suggest, research suggest there's two-way traffic. For example, in an untrained brain, so the same, to say and the brain tells you what to do, how to think, how to act. But with the training, as we see with people who engage in, 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 in more levels of, of you know, uh, more dedicate more time to, to development of, of mental processes, what we call consciousness in mind trainings and meditation, then it looks like that if you change your brain, you, if you change your mind, you can actually change your brain. So there's a kind of two-way traffic properly, especially in fields of OCD and those kind of forms of science. It's very interesting to see the two-way traffic that in one way an untrained mind has to act in a particular way because the brain tells you what to do. But with a trained mind, actually you can reverse that process, rewire the brain, and actually there's first consciousness and then particular brain activity. So yeah, it's a very, I find it a very interesting field because in, in Eastern forms of philosophy, we always talk about consciousness being different than matter, right? Similar properties as we just discussed of a process of, of coming and going of parts and a collection of parts really imputed. So in that way, it has very, very similar properties as the physical brain, right? So, but it's a question, right? If, if consciousness is really a property of the brain or is it something else than the brain but has similar properties? So that's a very, very 
I mean, it's a very exciting field of science now. In neuroscience, we can see people opening up uh, with this idea. And yeah, why not research it and see what are the possibilities and what is consciousness and how does it relate with the physical brain and how does it relate with the things we observe? And then we can take it a step further and then go to the extent of how to things appear to the mind, how it influence our perception, how it influence how we think. And that all comes together with mental health issues as we face in, 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 in modern times more and more. So there's a lot of very interesting fields to examine more that probably can benefit society at large in, in, in a great deal. So yeah, it's a very exciting kind of development as we, as we can see, yeah. We're gonna make one additional comment on that. Um, I agree, I, I, I entirely agree. And uh, um, the additional comment is the following. Uh, there seems to be something uh, uh, very mysterious um, seems to me in, in the in, in the relation between the brain and, and the mind, extremely mysterious. Uh, and I believe that this sense of mystery, I mean, I, I don't have the solution of the mystery, but I think that the sense is just so mysterious, seems to me, that's what I argue at the end, last part of my book. It's based on two ideas which might be both wrong. Okay. One idea is that matter. It's actually, you know, a set of little particles bouncing around with forces, little stones attracting another. That's the reality of the brain. The other idea is that the self, the conscious self, it's an entity. It's a central entity that exists by itself, is real, and you know, gets uh, impressions uh, from 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 this. Now, if we hold on to this strong sense, uh, a priori intuition about this, the, the mind as existing by itself, or, and if we hold, hold on to this idea of, uh, you know, the physical world is just matter. These are irreducible to us, seems to be irreducible to one another. But, but it seems to me that uh, these are weak ideas, both of them, and the, the both signs and uh, uh, the, the deep philosophical thinking that I found in Nagarjuna are contradicting not one, but both these ideas. So the mind is not a thing. The self is not a thing by itself, which exists and then somehow dreams the world. That's not the correct way of viewing the things. That's not a useful way of viewing the, the self. And matter is not you know, a collection of little things with properties, uh, neither. So both this irreducible, uh, 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 metaphysical ideas, uh, the self is, exists by itself, matter exists by itself, are not good ways of thinking about the world. Uh, matter exists much more in an interactive way, or much more similar to consciousness, and the self exists itself much more as a process, as an interacting way, much more similar to, to that kind of matter. So this is not a solution of the problem, but is it seems to me a reflection that takes away uh, the sense of the, uh, the, the problem relation between our brain and our mind, it uh, uh, cannot be uh, solved. Um, it's not so different. Um, the way we understand the physical world and the way we understand the, the mental world. As Geshe was saying, there are, there are a lot of common aspects between the two, extremely common aspects of these the two. Uh, we don't even know if the actual distinction makes sense ultimately. And that seems to me the, uh, the interesting philosophical uh, door, which is opened um, by thinkers like Nagarjuna. Mm, that's very nice. Yeah, in these kind of dialogues, it, it, there's often a freak out point when we hear that Buddhism says the mind is immaterial, but it seems like what you're saying is, you know, matter's not as material <laughs> as we think it yeah. is, right? It's more yeah. relational and yeah, energetic. Yeah. Matter is not, exactly, matter is not as material as, According to science, modern science, matter is not as material as we, we as, as is depicted, but the mind is not so fundamental as it is depicted either. Seems to me, 